Welcome to another Git tutorial video. My name is Dan and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Git index, uh, which you may or may not be familiar with. So let's get started. Right here I have just a simple hello world repo where I have, uh, let me just show you all the files here real quick. I can manage to type. So these are all the files. It's just hello world. It creates an instance of a box class. The box class is defined down here. It just has a length, width, and height, and a report method that simply just prints the value. So it's pretty simple. It's, uh, you know, output hello world, then it, box one reports. So there's make file. So if I make and run the binary, we just get the simple output. So this is just a simple, super simple, um, development working environment that we're going to use as our example for trying to, uh, to teach you how Git's index works. So the index is when you do a Git status, the stuff that shows up in green, and you can see there's nothing here yet. So let's go ahead and just make a modification um, so we can stage something in the index. So I add a line. If I do get status now, it shows up in red. When you get add something to the index, in this case, the dash U is a shortcut for anything that's um, already tracked and modified, it shows up in green. This means that the change I just made was get added to the index. So the index is anything you see in green is a change that's in the index. So a lot of people that are new to Git, their entire exposure to the index is, well, I make a bunch of modifications, I end up with 10 or 15 files that are read. Right before I commit, I do git add, and then I immediately do git commit. And that's okay. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a perfectly fine way to use git. But what I want to show you in this video is how powerful the index can be. So as an example, let's say we made that change, but we want to make more changes. Um, and we're, so we're not really ready to commit, but what we added is something that we like that we want to be able to get back to. And that's really the key. So let me show you here. Let's continue with this file and let's add a third line here. Let's add a third line. Write the file. And now if I do get status, Here's what we see. We see the change that we just made. So Git, Git is telling you here, it's like, hey, I found modifications to hello.cpp that are newer than the modifications you staged in the index. And this is just Git reporting that it found those modifications. So what we have here is a state where hello.cpp has the two lines we've added since the last commit. The index has the one line we've added since the last commit. And we have a way to get back to that state if we want to. So that, that's what this is. The index is a temporary staging area. You can think of it kind of like almost a commit. It's a half commit, meaning there's no commit message, but if it's in green up here, that means we can, we can get back to this state. Um, at any time. So, and the way that we do that is a git checkout of the file. And it tells you right here, it says, if you want to discard the changes that it shows in red, you do a git checkout on the file. So let's do that and we'll see what happens. Now if we do git status, we'll see, hey, we still have the changes we staged in the index. And if we look at the file, we see the one line we added, but the third line is gone because we discarded that change, right? I hope that makes sense so far. So let's go ahead and add another change. 
that's different. Write the file, get status. So now we're back to the scenario where the index has the change that we, the first line we added. The uh, gets telling us that there's changes not staged for the commit, the line we just added a few seconds ago. I want to show you all the permutations of what these commands do to try to give you an understanding of, of how the index works. So we already did the git checkout, which discards the changes. Let's go ahead and git add this change and see what happens. If we do git status, we notice that the red modifications are gone because they have been added to the index. So now what we have done is we've sort of half committed this new line to the index and it shows up as sort of appended to what was already in the index, if that makes sense. Um, so let's go in this I'm gonna <laughs> I'm purposely gonna try to confuse you and try to explain what's going on because this can get confusing quickly. Let's go in here and remove the line that we just added. We do get status now. We'll see a modification to this file again. And it's saying, hey, this file has been modified since the last time you added it to the index. And in this case, the modification is the removal of the line. So if we look at git diff tool, it'll show us the difference. It'll, on the left, it'll show us what's in the index. And on the right, it'll show us uh, what, what exists now in your working directory. So on the left here, this is what we staged in the index. And on the right is what the working file is right now, because we removed that line. So that makes sense, right? So here's, here's another, here's the last permutation that we haven't shown. What happens if we get reset head on this file? It says do that to unstage the changes. So let's try it. Get reset. Actually, real quick, before we, this is one of my pet peeves with Git. They really got to get their beginner documentation up to snuff. Because, I mean, you look at the man page of this. Check this out. Git reset man page. Tell me if this makes sense to you. In the first and second form, copy entries from tree-ish to the index. In the third form, set the current branch head, head to commit, optionally modifying it, blah, 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 blah. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. So <laughs> that's sort of why I'm making these tutorial videos, because the man pages are almost impossible to read. So basically what this means is unstage this change from the index. So let's go ahead and do it. Oops, to type it correctly. Now if we do get status, we'll notice that everything in green is gone. Now when I say gone, I just mean it's no longer in the index. We didn't actually change the contents of this file in the working tree at all. So what we did was when we said git reset head on this file, we said anything we've staged in the index to go ahead and forget. In other words, we're telling Git, hey, those things that we staged in the index, don't worry about it anymore. Um, and basically, if we look at hello.cpp, it actually hasn't changed since the last time we touched it. Remember, we added a line down here and then we deleted the line. And so the, the, ver the, the state of this file is exactly as it was before the git reset head command that we just did. All we did was tell git that what we staged earlier in this green area we no longer want to care about. So we, we can no longer get back to that state because we've unstaged it from the index. I hope that makes sense. It, it It's a little confusing at first. The git's index is designed to not only let you define what you're about to commit, but also to incrementally add stuff 
to that in your workflow. So as an example, let's just go ahead and we'll just check this out. We'll go back to the last commit. We're at a clean state. I just want to show you what that workflow would look like. So let's go ahead and open all our source files real quick. And let's just pretend we're doing some development. Let's say, hey, we want a second box instance and then we want to report uh, each box to the screen. And we made that change. We wrote the file. We got to get status. We're like, okay. We made that change. Get diff tool will show us exactly what we just changed, which is exactly what we expect. We like that change. We add it to the index, right? But let's say we're not done yet. Let's say uh, we want to make some more modifications. So we have two boxes. Um, let's say we want to add a new method where we can set the value of, let's just say width. So set width and it takes in a double and then it sets width equal to that value. Have to add this to the header file so it will compile. All right, so we added a method called set width. And let's do get status now. We see, oh, we have modifications to box, cpp, and .h. We added the set width stuff. So let's go ahead and add that stuff to the index too. Get status shows it in the index now. But we're not done yet. We didn't actually implement it. So let's go ahead and go do that. We're going to do... Uh, so in the beginning, let's just say we're going to do box one dot set width, and change it to 10. Right in the beginning of the program. Put out, do get status again, and we see our change there. Um, and if we do get diff tool, we'll see only what's different. So only the modification shown here compared to what's in the index. And we just see that, set width equal to 10. So let's say, oh crap, we don't actually want set width equal to 10. Let's just go ahead and discard that change. So we do exactly what is stated here. Get check out the file to discard the change. And once again, this is only discarding the modification here. So what's up here is what we're going to get restored by doing this checkout. So we get checkout, hello.cpp, and we do get status. We notice that that change is gone. We still have the hello cpp that we added to our index, which, as you can see, has you know box two and the stuff that we added earlier. So let's say uh, we didn't like changing it to ten. Let's do box one dot set width. 15th. So make. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I staged my changes earlier, but I didn't run make. I forgot to do that. So I didn't notice that there's a syntax error, right? This is actually a great, um, great surprise as I'm doing this on the fly because this is something you actually run into, right? Uh, so we're missing a semicolon. Box CPP uh, 21, so line 21, oops, wrong file. Forgot a semicolon. Check it out. So we fixed that. We see get status here that we have changes to both hello CPP and box CPP compared to the index. And get diff tool is really your friend here, guys, when you're doing this. You're like, well, what did I have before? I don't remember. What's the change? So it's showing us box CPP has an extra semicolon and hello CPP has the set width that we added before. So now if we run make, we notice that it builds and it runs, right? And there's the 15 of the setter that we did before. And so, you know, get status is showing 
We have modifications. We like these changes. Let's go ahead and add everything in red to the index. Get status again shows those three files green because now the changes that were in red got absorbed into what's into the index. And we can continue working in this way until we're satisfied, right? So what this lets us do is we can always get back to the last temporary save state. Um, but at some point you're going to get to a point where you're happy with the content of what you've done in this repo and that's when you should make your commit. So um, before I do that, what I like to do is to get a summary to remember exactly what I changed. I like to do git diff tool and if you give it the dash dash cached option, I go over this in the diff tool video, it shows you what's in the index compared to the last commit. So this is a great way to see a summary of, hey, what am I about to commit? And so this is a good reminder. It's going to show, oh yeah, we added set width to the box class. There's the prototype for it. And we added a second box instance. So, you know, let's say this is a good place to commit. We commit and we say added set width to box class added second instance of box. So this is a this is a good example of what a commit message should look like. In a lot of my videos I just type some crap because I'm trying to show you the mechanism. But and I maybe should have pointed this out earlier in my videos. These commit messages are really important. Do do your best to summarize exactly what's changed in you know a sentence or two when you make this commit message. Write the message, and we're done. So our git status shows that we're clean. Our git log shows the commit we just made at the top, and it is now forever in our history, and we are able to push, pull, share, however we want to do it. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. I really encourage you, if you're, if you're new to git and you want to understand the index, you're not going to get it just by watching this video. You have to really get in there and try stuff out and I suggest making a hello world repo just sort of in your own area so you don't have to worry about running the wrong command in your real development repo you can try stuff out in your little hello world repo until you really understand how it works uh, and it'll give you confidence in in using the tool in general so uh, my name's Dan. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.